Now, you've probably heard about these protests and demonstrations that have been taking place across uh, various different parts of the Canary Islands in recent weeks. There were more protests in Majorca, Menorca and Ibiza over the past two days or so. And basically the protesters, they're out, they're holding up uh, large placards that read SOS residents Enough mass tourism. Decky Dillon is on the line. Decky is from um, Decky Dillon's Gigi's in, is it Matagorda in Lanzarote? What is the situation there, Decky, at the moment? Hi, how you doing? Good. Um, well, it's basically the situation, a lot of the situation is that um, for an island of 140, 145,000 people, uh, there's nowhere for people to live long term. Um, the government have issued all these VV licenses, which is for holiday lets on a, on the privately owned apartments, and rents that would have been say about five or six hundred euros a month for long term um, for long term rentals before COVID have now gone up by over double. You could pay a thousand or twelve hundred a month for a one bed apartment, and a lot of people that live here and work here can't afford that. And the government then is issuing all these licenses for these big, massive hotels to be built. And um, they, there's no social housing then for people to actually live on. So a lot of people, I think mainly, I think the press, the British press mainly have blown it up that tourists aren't welcome. But like Lanzarote, I can't talk for other islands, but Lanzarote is solely dependent on mm. tourism. Well, I was just um, going to say. Like it's got, it's got to be the it's got to be the main industry for a lot of those for a lot of the Canary Islands, Decky. Yeah, I mean, Tenerife is has a population I think of a million people. We have a population of one hundred and forty four thousand residents living here, so we shouldn't really have the situation that we have, but we do. Um, people can rent to tourists for you know up to five six hundred a week. And you can look, people buy properties to make money, which is fine. But a lot of the properties were oversold for tourism and <clears throat> the residents that live here are in a situation now where they actually, I've like got people that work for me, at one stage she's one girl had a problem in her apartment and she was afraid to contact her landlord about the, the problem. She paid for it to be fixed herself because she was afraid and be told to move out because she'll get over double, if not two and a half times the rent to a tourist than she will to a resident. So you know? it's, it's the housing situation, effectively. Locals and um, locals in, in Lanzarote and Tenerife and many of the other islands, um, they're looking for the authorities now to bring in some sort of... It's really rent controls, isn't it, Decky? That's, yeah. that's what they're looking for. But like I mentioned there were, there were pretty large-scale protests, weren't there? Um, there was, yeah, there was. And look, as I said, a lot of people are angry and I think it's been um, displayed in the wrong way. I mean, where I am in Matagorda, which is at the edge of the airport, the, the opposite end of Porto del Carmen, we've got a predominantly Irish and English um, bracket here um, with English, Welsh, Scottish, Irish, and most of them nine months of the year are retirees. That come out for so, so they're effectively the residents then, Daki. Really? Well, they aren't. I mean, a lot of them stay in small bungalow complexes, which were mm. purposely built for tourists, and they stay in them. They come for five or six weeks. A lot of them come for a break in the winter, because obviously, yeah. But they're resident the often the nine gone. months of the year, though. Uh, n- n- no, very few of them would come for that long. You would have people that would come for a month at a time. Okay, the come and break it maybe. For a okay. Month yeah, and they go back, like, I mean, May is always quieter for us because it's predominantly communion and confirmation season at home. So the granny and granddads all stay at home for that, <laughs> you know. So, but like this square that I'm in, Central Commercial Matagorda, has four or five top class Irish pubs and 10 or 12 really good restaurants mm. that all work very hard all year round and manage to survive okay. COVID. I mean, we didn't get the same breaks that were given at home. I mean, any grants we got, we had to pay back and were taxed on. And it was a bit of a nightmare out here. But we managed, we all yeah, managed, y- everyone that was here pre-COVID. Are you living here. full-time there, Decky? I'm here 12 years. Oh, are you? Right. Year. Okay. And you're a full-time yeah. resident and, and operator your, your business there? Yes. Yeah. yeah. Okay. And, so, you know, and I mean, ev- everyone in this square is just welcomes tourists with open yeah. arms. 
St- stay with me no for one. stay with me for a moment, Jackie, if you don't mind. I think we've we've another caller in Spain with us on the line. Um, Amy O'Dowd is with us. Amy is from Finnegan's Wake Irish Bar in Lanzarote. I'm sure it's probably well known to a lot of our listeners. Um, what is the impact, Amy, of these protests now at the moment? Um, at the the impact at the minute, I haven't really seen any change. They're looking to bring in new regulations in regards to holiday left. Um. I've read an article there that they're saying that you can't own a holiday left unless you have a residential. They're trying, but as of yet, nothing's really, nothing's changed. What's the impact on business? Um, there, ha- there hasn't really been any impact on business. Like May at the minute, as what Jackie said there, this time of year is always much quieter for us, but like, as you said, the message that's been given that the Canary Islands don't want tourism, that's not the message that we're trying to give at all. It's um, it's more that we want the government to kind of look after the people who are living here and um, put a stop to people buying up holiday less, things like that. So people have places to live in terms of business. Um, we're still flat out here. So people are still coming. <laughs> yeah, so 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 the message and, and the placards and the signs, I was really looking at some of them online from the most recent protest, I think, in, yeah. in Mallorca and Ibiza. Um, the signs that read SOS residents, enough mass tourism, that hasn't so far affected Irish holidaymakers from travelling to Lanzarote. No, absolutely not. Like, it's more us that are living here, um, as Jackie says, like I had, a, I had a similar problem in my in my apartment that I'm living in, and I'm like I I, I, w- I wouldn't message my landlord over problems. I'd rather fix them myself because I'm too scared they're going to be like, oh, sure no, you move out, we'll find someone else and charge you more money." Because there is literally nowhere to live for any of us at the minute. Um, How long are you there, like Amy? There, I'm here eight years now. And do you sort of is that a, it's a full time move? Is it you're, you're you're kind of planning to live there permanently? Yeah, I've had my my two my two daughters. I had them here. They're in school. I'm I'm settled here now. <laughs> yeah, so you 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 want to stay, but but actually being able to afford rent now is becoming such a problem because of the number of holiday or tourist yeah. lets that are there. It's a serious problem. Like for bar owners, the system, um, the cost that they have to uh, for employees is is through the roof. Um. Wages aren't where they should be, but rent and cost of living has shot through the roof. Like I'm, you're looking at now for one bedroom apartment, thousand euros, but your wages might be only twelve hundred. Like that's what we're kind of looking at. So, okay. but there's no regulations for that for the government whatsoever. So really, what the message is is more, yeah, you keep bringing in the tourists, but you've not got the right conditions for the people who are living here and the staff that are supposed to serve all these tourists. People who are here are overworked, underpaid. Um, but yes, the tourism is still coming in at the level it is. I, I understand that the call from a lot of the protesters is that they want authorities to stop people who haven't lived there for more than, is it five years from being in a position to buy properties? They want more controls really on holiday accommodation. Yeah, really, yeah, because you've got people that are coming over, buying a house, they'll put it on Airbnb and then they won't be here. They're not paying tax here, they're not doing anything. There's a lot of illegal holiday left like you've got people buying up apartments that they might come out three four times a year rented out family members or things like that other than that it's sitting there empty and you're getting three times the amount of money for a holiday left than you would for a long-term left do you know what i mean and these are properties that are probably sitting here vacant a lot of the time that people just used to come in and out not paying tax coming within their 90 days um and that's really it and and us all that live here that pay our tax that work hard to serve the people coming on holidays have no option people are living on sofas paying rent with nothing left at the end of the month it's just gotten out of hand really uh, Own Corrie is the editor of the, the Air and Travel uh, magazine um, Own I know that the message there from, from Jackie and Amy is that you know they, they don't want to uh, deter Irish tourists from travelling to Lanzarote or any of the other Canary Islands but is it actually putting some tourists off? Yeah, it's quite interesting and a little bit worrying. Uh, you know, the pr- pushback against over tourism uh, pre pandemic would traditionally have been limited to places like Venice and Dubrovnik and Barcelona. Uh, what we've seen in recent weeks has been a scale of protest which took me by surprise, a lot larger than I expected, and probably the people running tourism uh, by surprise. Traditionally, 
uh, pushback against tourism has been about nuisance behaviour, you know, drinking in the streets, noise, all of that sort of thing. And occasionally the pressure on uh, services, health services, waste management, water, how, you know, they're, at the, they're the things that tourism brings. And we've sort of seen a, a residue of that over the years. What it seems to be arising very much in places where the, and Jackie and Amy have both alluded to, to, to it, the uh, level of the, uh, the dependence of the economy in these places, in the Balearics and in the Canarias, is very heavy on tourism. It seems to be local, local problems. It, yeah, very much. I mean, it's employment. It's uh, it's also the money that's generated. I mean, there's a lot of uh, things said that tourists don't pay tax. They actually spend at such a level that the tax, the uh, VAT and the other indirect taxes they leave uh, alleviate the tax burden on the locals. But that's a separate argument. But we're back into uh, things like lack of housing, rent prices uh, for residents spilling over. And the big change in uh, not so much in the last few years, but probably for over the last 20 years or so, or so has been the nature of tourism contracting, accommodation contracting. Two things have happened. Tourists uh, have come out and bought property there. And the second thing is that the days when Gillian Bowler or Joe Walsh had to take out a contract with a hotel are long over. Everybody who has an apartment can actually let to tourists now because of the, arri the arrival of Airbnb, Verbo, all of those yeah, lots of those. So it that all of that it seems a confluence of different things. That when uh, local problems arise and there are massive local problems, uh, there are depopulation problems, there are rent prices, and then there's a you know there was enough housing built to be to meet either the growing population that of these places or the uh, transient population who come in to work in tourism. All of those local problems seem to be spilling over into uh, an, an anger which we are which is a bit worrying is going to be pushed in the face of tourists people don't like going for a week's holidays even if there's one night that somebody says uh, something angry to them and these people are you know we are seeing as you say protests uh, bills um, posters being put up telling tourists they're not welcome not the sort of message you want an economy that's so heavily dependent on tourism I'm not sure there's a quick solution Andrew. Okay. But particularly own as well for for so many um for so many Irish people. I mean, they, sure we all know somebody who you know has probably been to the Canaries or some one of the Spanish islands or mainland okay. Spain over uh, over the past number of weeks. Hang on, own there for for one second. I think Andrea, the figures the figures have just come back from the la uh, the number of visits to Spain the first three months of this year. We're on course for three million Irish visits to Spain and the islands, considering our population. We Spain is almost a domestic holiday for Irish people this stage. Uh, Dean is with us own as well for a moment. Uh, Dean, I believe you're living um, in North Spain, is that right? Yeah, I live in a resort called Loret del Mar. It's in Girona. It would be 20 minutes from Girona Airport. Okay. Also, Great soccer I team. First, when I left Ireland in 2008, I moved to Gran Canaria myself. Right. And I lived in Gran Canaria up until the pandemic. And now I second everything that those people have said. When I moved there, I got an apartment for 500 euros. Beautiful apartment, two bedroom on top of the mountain in Puerto Rico, overlooking the golf course of uh, the lovely big hotel below the mountain. Um, but over time, the rent went from 500 to 750 to 900. And then even in the pandemic, they wanted to put it up to 1,000. But in saying that, the people that were next to me, they were paying 1,800. So they were getting to the point where people were being able to charge what you want. And like that girl said, when you work in the Canaries, I used to manage the Shamrock Bar in the commercial centre in Puerto Rico, the main commercial centre. Right. And when you work in the Canary Islands, your salary is 1,200. And if you're, if you're good, you might make 40, 50 euros extra a night in tips. But you can't depend on that. So the rents have just gone out of control. And especially for the Canaries, the problem for the Canaries is we get a lot of Scandinavians who come down for three or four months at a time. So people are unwilling now to do long-term rentals. They'll only want to make a contract for seven months because they know when the Scandies come down for them three or four months in the winter mm. that they can charge the star, the moon and the sky. So it's not that you do want tourists. It's, it's to do with the amount of time people are able to rent properties, really. 
Yeah, and it, it, it's just because of the scandals and that, the, the actual genuine Canarians now, they can't afford to live on their own island. And it's resources. Like the Canary Islands is always in a state of drought. And yet they're granting all these licenses for hotels okay. with pool, with multiple pools. But yet they're being put on water restrictions in the north of the island where the actual, the, all the locals live. Uh, so um, the, the, they have no problem with tourism. They completely depend on tourism. Apart from tourism, their only other industry is bananas. Yeah, well, it's it's a temporary limit, though, on, on, on tourist arrivals. Um, isn't that the issue when it comes to the short-term properties? Amber's with us. Amber, I believe you're in Porto Carmen. What's the situation there? Hi, yeah. So um, I actually live in Carmen myself. I used to own a bar in Carmen as well. So I've been here for 22 years and always worked in hospitality. And I think there was a man on before saying, People coming on holiday, this is going to be some sort of hostility and it's going to be in your face, like, send tourists away. And I don't ever think that is the vibe. And any protests that have been happening has been in the capital city of the island. It's not necessarily in your face protesting, people telling you to go home. Because but there were there were some people. signs quite similar to that, you know. Like I, I know a lot of these protests initially kicked off back in in April, but they seem to be a fairly regular occurrence now over the different weekends. Um, I think the last one I seen was at the big, at the end of March. There's not been any others since. It's definitely a talking point, but I think the message of like tourists go home. I, I don't feel that that is the message that is being put out there. It's more a sense of Things need to be done fairer. People have nowhere to live. Mm. The wage is still extremely minimum. We're not having water because of the high consumption. It's affecting local people that live here. And that's why that there's been a stand and people are saying this isn't fair anymore, that the tourists have a priority over the locals. Because how will the tourist industry carry on to thrive as it does here? But I, there's no one to work. Yeah, I, I suppose the, the concern though as well, and I totally appreciate, Decky, the concerns that, that you have for, for staff and that Amy mentioned as well, um, the people living there and, and, and locals. But like... If the tourists, I mean, when you listen to the figures that Owen mentioned, um, the three million, you know, the, the numbers from Ireland travelling to Spain to holiday each year, if those people pull back and stop going, there's going to be a huge impact on the tourist industry. Absolutely, there would be, there would be. But if there's nowhere to live, how are these bars going to stay open? How are these hotels going to stay open without staff? You can't run a business without staff. Decky, are you concerned about this? 100%. I mean, as Amber knows, I, I know Amber, she has the bar next door to me. And um, it's like, it, I'm lucky I have the same crew of girls working for me for the last four or five years. And, you know, they're they're of an age where they're, they're probably more financially stable than some others. But they still work, they work as much as they can. They work harder because the tips are a big part of their income as well. Um and a lot of bars, two or three restaurants in, in, in our square here, closes one or two days a week because they have to give, under law, you, you have to give two days a week yeah. off. And the two days have to be together. Right. So, yeah, so, I mean, some places just have to close. So the owners have to suffer of two days of no turnover, but still have the same wage bill. And they, they have, because they have to be in law the two same days. Yeah, every I think nearly every restaurant in the square here closes for at least a day. Oh, and the other point that a lot of listeners are, are getting in touch, um, you know, I suppose they're, they're listening in, you know, in, in one ear to the situation and conditions um, for a lot of people living in, across the Spanish islands. And at the same time, if they're holiday booked to Tenerife and Lanzarote uh, and Ibiza and Menorca this summer over the next two and three months, if people are concerned about this or this escalates or continues even, can people pull out on? Um, if you there's if you pull out because you're concerned about any aspect of your holiday in advance, and it could be heat, protests, whatever. Um, unless you you don't get you have no comeback. 
you're doing you've just decided unilaterally if the tour operator decides to cancel or the airline decides to reduce services that's when you have a comeback uh, you don't even have a comeback under t- uh, travel insurance that tends to be really um, health related with doctors letters all of that sort of stuff there isn't a, a, a what a, an automatic guarantee that you get your money back just because you change your mind obviously there there are different terms for different airlines and depending on when you've booked you will get be able to get your money back uh, uh, apart from a deposit from some of the tour operators but we aren't in a situation where people can decide oh they're protesting there, I don't want to go uh, and get their money back. Do you expect this will escalate? I'm surprised that it has gone on for as long as it does and the nature of social media now and the ability to uh, arouse a little bit of outrage and to get people to gather in pro- for protests I would imagine we will see more of this I do not expect it to impact tourism at all I expect most people to travel to the islands and uh, come home again without even having noticed it apart from maybe posters or signs that go up every now and again I don't I think that it's it's um largely a local issue for which is really animating people price of rents per cost of living all of those sort of concerns and the pressures that tourists bring on on services sometimes comes into it as well but I think it's a local issue between the protesters and the local authorities of which tourists will be to be quite honest oblivious they will come and go as if nothing had happened. You know, from listening to, to Amber and uh, and Amy and, and Dean there, what would absolutely strike you is that like the, you know, the housing situation and rental stories that we hear in this programme, they are not isolated to the Emerald Isle quite uh, quite clearly. Uh, Owen Curry there, editor of the Air and Travel magazine. Um, thanks to Decky, Dean, Amy and Amber. Uh, obviously, we have a lot of listeners in Spain and various different parts of the Canary Islands. Thank you for joining us on the show.